Oh, 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 my. Oh, you guys knew. You knew that right here on Little Sharky's underground psychedelic garage, it's better than Little Steven, you guys. Way better. Come on. You guys know it. And, um, you know, for tonight, I'm talking about uh, one of the greatest albums ever recorded in the history of rock by one of the greatest bands. And what's weird is this album's incredible. But on their next album after this, they don't just stay incredible. They get even better. Don't ask me how. This psychedelic journey of progressive, oh man, crystallized, demon-dwelling evil, yet friendly jazzy. Anybody jazzy? Fuck yeah, dude. These guys are such incredible musicians, all of them. And everybody in the group matters with the Strawberry Alarm Clock, Incense and Peppermint's album, released pretty late in 1967, you guys. I mean, this album, uh, you know, music was moving on. And uh, already, you know, Steppenwolf was recording their shit and things were changing. Psychedelia was beginning to wane a little bit in the latter part of 1967. Uh, when this album came out, you know, October 67, uh, and, you know, the Who sell out is after this, you guys, but... Uh, it's almost like the, some of these bands were trying to hold on to the summer of love as much as they possibly could. Because what an amazing summer. What an amazing whole entire year. But it just wouldn't have been the same without this incredible progressive rock band. Uh, the Strawberry fucking Alarm Clock, man. And all these guys get mad respect, revere, regard in the musicians community. You know, of course, you guys know about Bartek with Oingo Boingo, but I'm not even talking about that. The drummer, singer, dude, me, Clark the Shark with GE. You fucking know I was inspired, influenced, if you will, by that guy and the strawberry alarm clock. And um, a lot of people say, oh, it's just one song. No way. For people who know psychedelia, for people who wallow endlessly, nightly, crystallized, synthesized, mining through psychedelia, both, both pop psychedelia as well as underground, uh, you know, there's a lot of psychedelic bands that never even really got signed or they never even got anywhere and they were gone and faded away, you know, by 1968. But thank God, I praise the Lord above that the strawberry alarm clock and incense and peppermints, this incredible debut album, October 1967. What a fucking amazing album. One of the greatest pieces of music this ent entire album is you guys i mean from start to finish it's basically perfection i know it's going to get five stars but you know realistically it'll probably get four i don't know i'd love to see what rolling stone gave this and all music and all of them i haven't looked yet but i know this probably gets five fours Nobody better fucking give this thing a three, baby. You don't give the strawberry alarm clock anything less than a four. 4.5 should be the minimum, but five is the rule, baby. When we are talking about one of the greatest bands that ever existed, but, uh, 
you know, who has perhaps one of the greatest rock songs ever recorded. Uh, but this whole album is great. It's unbelievable, you guys, what a great year 1967 was. Um, so much incredible music that year. Some of it was recorded in 1966, you know, like The Doors' first album, and wasn't released until 1967. But uh, this music here definitely has the stamp of 1967 psychedelia, underground baby, and yet ruling the charts pop. I can't figure out 1967, you guys, that incredible, amazing year with so many amazing songs. Awesome, unbelievable. But nothing, none, baby, none more incredible than this album. I just love the playing, the drumming, the flute, uh, the progressive rock arrangements. I don't want to call this psychedelia. I think bands like Styx and Yes and Emer Emerson, Lake and Palmer and Eloy and all of them. Gosh, dude. Um, Jethro Tull. You know, they love the Who and they love the Beatles and their satanic majesties by the stones. But I think everybody really loved this album, Incense and Peppermints, by this incredible band, The Strawberry Alarm Clock. I think everybody loved this album the most. It's a tough battle between this and Sid Barrett. Uh, you know, Piper at the Gates of Dawn by Pink Floyd, also their debut. And of course, the Who sell out, sell out wasn't their debut, but it's like it was, you guys. Armenia City in the Sky and I Can See for Miles and Rail. Uh, you know, to me, that's like the Who, the debut album. But I don't know. What the fuck does Clark the Shark know right here at 1-800-449 from the fabulous golden EIB Sharkerphone. It's not a microphone. It's a Sharkerphone, you guys. And I'm getting older. I'm 58. And in April coming up, 2024, I'm turning 59. So if I stutter, it's not because I'm drunk on Jack Daniels. And it's not because I'm on acid or marijuana or any drug. It could be just because I took too many sleeping pills, Sominex and you know, mixed with Tylenol and aspirin and shit. Come on, you guys. Clark the Shark ain't hardcore. I don't want to do any hard drugs. I don't want to do anything. I want to be like Frank Zappa and just drink a couple of fucking cups of black coffee. Not right now, you guys. It's 1248 a.m. at night here on Thursday night, actually now Friday morning. Uh, November 11, I guess, 11, 12. I don't know, you guys. But just like Frank Zappa, I do no drugs and I never will again, except for just low grade generic sleeping pills that I buy at straight Stater Brothers or fucking dude. Listen to me stutter. The sleeping pills are rad, dude. Uh, or I buy them at Vons or I buy them at Albertsons or I buy them at Target or, you know, Kroger brand or, uh, dude, what's that? Um, up and up, you know, fucking Target up and up sleeping pills. I don't know you guys, but I wake up with black Folgers coffee or maybe Hawaiian coffee or maybe hardcore fucking coffee from Qatar or Bahrain or somewhere. But when I wake up tomorrow, I want to have some strawberry alarm clock fucking playing, you guys. Some amazing psychedelia right here on Little Sharky's Underground fucking garage, motherfucker, where I'm talking about one of the most incredible albums by incredible people, incredible musicians. Um, and like I said, it isn't just psychedelia. It's 
Oh, it only gets one review. It's prog rock, you guys. It is the birth of progressive music right here. All music gives it a four out of five. Oh, come on, all music. You should have gave it a five. And of course, side one, the world's on fire. What a song. SA clock 821. It's just very, it breaks into a jazz fusion flute, keyboards. The, oh man, what a song. You got to hear it. I wish I could play it or YouTube will delete my account and, and erase my videos. The liberal people, you know, the robot AI brained people at YouTube, they don't care about you, liberal. You keep voting for them because you think Trump and the Republicans or conservatives are racist. But let me tell you, you guys, the fucking world's on fire. And uh, it was never conservatives or uh, Republicans that were for slavery, dude. I don't know, maybe just a little. But the rich people down in the South, you know, they want the cheap labor baby to fucking do their shit down there in Alabama back in the fucking day, Georgia, Louisiana, all that shit. That's what we had the Civil War about. Who knows, dude? Maybe everybody's for slavery. But all I fucking know is the world's on fire. And I know slavery is still going on right now in 2023. They just call it by a different name. Now, instead of slavery, we don't call it that anymore. Now we call it working at Target and Walmart and Sam's Club. But the world's on fire. And I think the strawberry alarm clock back in 1967, they knew it, you guys. Track two, Birds in My Tree, is probably... One of my favorite songs on the album, it's incredibly melodic. One of the most killer, you know, I don't want to call it just a psychedelic song, man. I want to call it a fucking amazing song. Melodic, catchy, Birds in My Tree. And of course, Steve Bartek co-wrote it. Dude, everything that, that involves Bartek, I mean... He was just playing flute on this album, you guys. But with Oingo Boingo, he's the guitar player. And he takes that musical knowledge from this incredible band, the Strawberry Alarm Clock. And he takes it into the, you know, the 70s and the 80s with Oingo Boingo. Amazing. I love Lose to Live. Mark White's essay clock. Now, strawberries mean love and rainy day mushroom pillow. It's like they hypnotize you. They are the same song, you guys, but slightly different as this rock opera. Side one is incredible, but it slowly hypnotizes and crystallizes you and it blends and goes into side two with one song that begins at the end of side one, it's 301, but then it goes into practically the same song and it's 305 and it becomes like this enchanting rock opera. Strawberries mean love and rainy day mushroom pillow. Incredible, but then side two decides, you know what, Shark? Those fucking songs can just hold a fucking beer because from there it gets incredible, you guys, and everything. Ah, uh, dude, Paxton's Backstreet Carnival. It's only 201, but it's like a little mini piece and humming happy. Dude, I love this drummer, Randy Soul. Fuck, and he has it, baby. Past time with the sack, the instrumental, a little bluesy, jazzy, S.A. Clock again. But of course, incense and peppermints, I don't even care that, you know, the alarm clock did or didn't write it. 
Uh, it was meant to be, you guys. One of the greatest songs in the history of rock music. The keyboard's incredible. You've heard it a million times on K-Earth or I don't care. K-Earth has gone like shitty 80s now. And I miss all the 60s rock radio stations uh, that would just play Tammy Terrell and Marvin Gaye and the Supremes and all this fucking killer shit, you know, Smokey Robinson. And of course, the psychedelia, Jefferson Airplane and the Who I can see for miles. But of course, Incense and Peppermints and, you know, the Doors and the Beatles and just the fucking great, amazing shit of 1967. When I was only two years old, you guys, but you know, Incense and Peppermints becomes, in 1968, uh, a song that would rule the charts and would almost make uh, this band, the Strawberry Alarm Clock, just a household name, a household word, you guys, right there with the Doors, uh, right there with the Who and Cream and Hendrix and everybody. But these guys are such jazz fusion, psychedelia, keyboards soaked, flute drenched, amazing guitar, amazing drumming. You can tell Bobby Caldwell from Captain Beyond, he fucking loved this album. You can tell Ainsley Dunbar from Zappa and David Bowie, that drummer, he loved this album. You can tell everybody, you know, John Densmore loves this fucking album, you guys. The album, the incredible, amazing, psychedelic journey of an album ends with the incredible Unwind of the Clock. Lee Freeman and Ed King. Everybody matters in the band, you guys. Everybody, everybody. Mark White's, of course. Randy Soul, Ed King, Lee Freeman, all of them, dude, all of them, all of them, all of them. Of course, Bartek playing just flute. What would this album have been if they would have let him play guitar? You know, everybody here matters in this band. Everybody, you guys. This bass player, by the way, George Bunnell, incredible. Uh, in the world of musicians, let me tell you, me, Clark the Shark, because I know every Yes album, every ELP album, every Frank Zappa album, you guys, and we respect Mark White's organ, piano, electric piano, harpsichord, of course, his vocals, but uh, the band wouldn't be the band. You know, Randy singing the drums. Dude, I, Clark the Shark, sang the drums, baby. I played drums and I was influenced by Randy, but I had to sing and honor him. I saw that fucking video for Incense and Peppermints where they're just all decked out in their psychedelic fucking gear looking so fucking cool like they all just fucking ate a fucking ton of acid and mushrooms and smoked fucking weed all day or some shit and then they recorded their album dude what a year 1967 incredible but I say to people today in 2023 don't do drugs at all let that be in the past just drink coffee, you guys, and celebrate sobriety now in 2023 and sit down with some coffee and make music. Do it in honor of Frank Zappa, but do it in honor of Mark White's, Randy Soul, Ed King, Lee Freeman, George Bunnell, all these guys. Of course, Bartek from Oingo Boingo, Lovetto, Le all of them, dude. The next album would be more incredible, you guys. The next fucking album, dude, would um, would take this band to another level. 
where sadly this band would disappear uh, because I think they adapted to 1968. But 1968 was hard rock, heavy metal in their own way, you guys. Prog rock was growing. And just like the Electric Prunes, I think they did okay. But um, there was this far out angry thing, you know, like that The Who and the MC5 and Niggy Pop and, you know, Bowie and, and the Stones and, and people were doing, you guys. And the Strawberry Alarm Clock and, uh, you know, some of these bands, they just couldn't hang on, you know, uh, Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground and a bunch of them. Uh, they were casualties and so many people went solo or they just disappeared. Um, you know, when Lou Reed goes solo, it's never as good as the Velvet Underground. And uh, when Pete Townsend did that little solo album, and then later, you know, he does solo albums and they're interesting. Of course, they're really good, but it kind of hurts the who because he starts taking uh, good songs that could have been by the who and he takes them for himself in his solo albums. And, uh, you know, Dirk McQuickly, he does this at the end of the, the Ruddles, Beatles, whatever you call them. And uh, sadly, you guys, um, psychedelia began to mean, you know, like the Grateful Dead, a bunch of people going and dropping acid and wearing colorful clothes and dancing. And that's cool. Me, Clark the Shark, I got into the dead in the 80s and I went to like 100 shows. But for me, now that I'm sober and much older, I'm 58 years old, I look back and... I respect, revere, and regard stuff like the Strawberry Alarm Clock and the album Incense and Peppermints, their debut, late, late 1967, you guys. I regard this with, with much more importance than I do the Grateful Dead, even though, you know, Jerry was a great guitar player and all those guys are fucking cool as fuck, but... To me, psychedelia means Country Joe and the Fish, you guys. It means the Who sell out. Um, you know, it means Hendrix, of course. But when I really want to get psychedelic, uh, I think of those underground bands, you know, from Acid and Flowers, and or Flowers and Acid, whatever. The bands that never made it, that never really got a record deal, or, or maybe they did, but they got dropped. To me, it's almost like the Strawberry Alarm Clock in this album. It's like they uh, never made it. Like this album is an anomaly, an aberration, you guys. Such a weird thing that happened, and yet not is such a commercial mainstay too. something at the top of the chart that fucking belongs at the top of the billboard charts right next to the Supremes right next to Tammy Terrell and Marvin Gaye and uh, you know dude the blue eyed soul fucking groups back in the day and even the black soul dude um, Sam and Dave and Fuck whatever, dude, you name it. The strawberry alarm clock belong right there with Yes and King Crimson and ELP and the Who Quadrophenia as much as they belong on K-Earth 101 or as much as they belong with all the jazz fusion, flute playing. You know, dude, I'm not even talking about psychedelia i'm talking coltrane i'm talking people that fucking jam jazz back in the 60s 50s weird fucking shit the the jamming that this band does as they open this album and all throughout this album 
and then the way they can turn on a dime like Wayne fucking Gretzky on the ice and they can write a pop song that is psychedelic, catchy, atmospheric, and fucking amazing that just is textured and encompasses and encapsulates a moment and a memory. I look back at the 60s, 1967, 1968, in my crystallized memory of my mind's eye, and I see incense and peppermints, a yardstick for lunatics. One point of view, you guys. Who cares what things we do? Little to win, but almost nothing for Shark to lose. Right here on the Golden Sharky, the Clark the Shark Show from the fabulous Golden EIB Sharker phone. It's not a microphone and it's not broadcasting. It's crystallized, enhanced, digitally unaware, not AI. It is Sharky right here and it is fucking important that you come to me and you listen to all my videos because fucking forget all those other guys who review on YouTube you don't need them all you need is me Sharky forget the sea of tranquility forget that fucking guy dude he only peruses the music he doesn't know like me. He didn't live it in Redondo Beach like me, Clark the Shark. Forget all the heavy metal kids that listened to metal back in the 80s. And that's all they listened to. And now they've grown up and they decide they're going to review the kinks and the doors and the strawberry alarm clock. Don't let them do that fucking shit to you people. You listen to a loner. You listen to a guy with no friends. You listen to a fucking guy that people hate and people despise, but that, you know, little Angelia loves. And she can sense this person has a real heart. And this person is a real fucking human being. And this person is Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255. Or I'm telling you, young person, if you're just 21 years old, you know, you were born in 2002. I want you to go buy incense and peppermints, this jazz fusion, twisted, crystallized, psychedelic masterpiece that influenced everybody from Yes to Emerson, Lake and Palmer to The Who, dude, to The Doors themselves, you guys. Everybody had to look at this album and had to go retool and their music and get better, learn how to do everything better after this fucking amazing album right here, you guys. This isn't just psychedelia. This is jazz. This is flute. This is arrangements. This is progressions. This is prog rock. This is more than garage rock. Yet this is very much in a fucking garage. Eat your heart out, little Steven. You can fucking forget it because this is the Clark the Shark Show. And I'm talking about incense and peppermints by the strawberry alarm clock where every single guy in this band matters. Not just Steve Bartek, you guys, not just whites, all these guys. They all matter. I want you to listen to this album and then listen to the next one and find out why these guys aren't just the real psychedelia but they go way, way beyond. And they are musicians where they are blowing your fucking mind with how great the keyboards and how fucking great the drumming is and how fucking amazing the flute is and the bass and all the singing and all the harmonies and how these guys can write a pop song. These guys can rock pop psychedelia or underground psychedelia and they can fucking do it better than you and you and you and everybody right here on the Clark the Shark show you guys where you just got the only review of the debut album 
this psychedelic rock masterpiece by the Strawberry Alarm Clock from October 1967. You just got the only review of this album that you will ever want or you will ever need. And I want you to come only to the Clark the Shark show and watch my videos because I have to talk about myself because I am important. I'm more important than any of you because I fucking grew up in Redondo Beach and Torrance and I was seven years old in, in 1972 and I was eight years old in 1973. Yeah, I was listening to BOC, sure. But I was also listening to the Jefferson Airplane, Country Joe and the Fish and the Who Sell Out. I was listening to the dead, I admit it. I was fucking listening to Zappa. You know, I was fucking listening to Funkadelic and all kinds of shit, you guys. But in my wee little moments, I sneak away. And when I want to learn about real musicianship and real progressive psychedelic rock, I fucking put on Incense and Peppermints, the debut album by the fucking Strawberry Alarm Clock, one of the most amazing bands ever in the history of music. How these guys are not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Tell me how Styx with Dennis DeYoung and all those guys, they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How about BOC? Dude, I can go down the fucking list. You know, why not put uh, the Count Five Dude, why not The Music Machine? All those bands from 1966, and not just the Standells, dude, everybody, they all belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why the fuck you put in Green Day? I don't even want to fucking say their name. Why you put in Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but you don't put in the Strawberry Alarm Clock? with this fucking incredible album. And then the next album after this album is even more incredible than this one, you guys. It doesn't contain a big, huge pop hit at the top of the Billboard charts. Fuck that. Who needs that? You know, me, Clark the Shark, I have big hits all over the internet. You know, my so Gynistia, she's a bitch and Brandy and it ain't easy. But sometimes I'm like, you guys, fuck those songs. Don't listen to the White Black song or that shit. You know, listen to my other shit. The theme, you know, the instrumental where I am influenced by the Strawberry Alarm Clock, you guys. Listen to Katie's song, Girdle. Yeah, dude. Listen to I Ray Bob, dude, where I am clearly influenced by the keyboards of Incense and Peppermints. I'm influenced even more than The Doors or The Who or Country Joe and the Fish or The Dead or any of that. When I think great musicianship and incredible psychedelia that doesn't need drugs, that doesn't fucking need acid, it doesn't need that shit. It has quality all on its own. It just needs a cup of coffee. It don't even fucking need that. This album that to me is more amazing than anything by Frank Zappa. And believe you me, you guys, I fucking love Frank Zappa more than anything. But I want you to listen to this whole album, Incense and Peppermints by the Strawberry Alarm Clock, one of the greatest albums ever recorded ever. And don't just listen to it for one song. I want you to listen to everything. And I know you're going to love Side 2, and you're going to realize that it isn't even for that one song. It's for all those songs. But then you go back and you're like, holy shit, dude. Side 1 was fucking catchy too. Not just fucking catchy, atmospheric, crystallized, mesmerizing, hypnotizing. You are captured in a memory right here on the Clark the Shark Show, where I control your brain 
and I control your thoughts and I wrote everything about your miserable little life. Everything about you, I did it just for my amusement. I am God and I am Jesus and I am Mohammed and Buddha and I am psychedelia, but I don't need drugs for I can control you and take over your mind with my mind where I don't even use a drug. I just use my soul. <laughs> You are ruled by the mind of the shark right here from the golden EIB fucking sharkraphone. It's not a microphone. It wasn't made by the sure microphone company. Fuck that company. They make microphones for Dave Grohl and that fucking little douchebag in Green Day. Fuck them. You're never going to listen to them ever again. You're never going to go to their fucking shows. You're going to come here to the Clark the Shark show where you fucking worship me and me alone because I just enhanced and chemically altered your brain and I didn't use psychedelics. I didn't use mushrooms or acid or marijuana that the liberals want to legalize so they can get your vote. The liberals just want to let criminals out so they can fucking rob you and rape you. I want to lock criminals up. I don't fucking think it's cool when they let them out because they hurt people. But me, Clark the Shark, I'm not a liberal. I'm not even a fucking Republican. I'm not even an independent. I'm not a conservative. Don't fucking call me that. That sounds like a fucking guy that recycles aluminum. A conservative. Sure, I, Sharky, I recycle aluminum. I do my part for the environment. I fucking collect cans and I drink Shasta sodas from Stater Brothers. And I turn them in at the can recycler. I recycle aluminum. But don't ever fucking call me a conservative or a Republican or a liberal or a Democrat or an independent. I'm none of those fucking things. I'm not even with the natural law or the Green Party. I'm shark a doodle do shark a lamb a ding dong right here from the golden EIB sharkerphone. It's not a microphone right here. The Wolfman Jack on crack. And you just got the word. The only review of this mesmerizing psychedelic album that you will ever need. Go buy it at iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. The strawberry alarm clock, incense and peppermints. For who cares what things we choose? Little to win and your house, your mortgage, your life savings, your crypto, everything of this world you shall lose. Everything will burn and we will all be gone in a nuclear flash. Dust in the wind. Everything is dust in the wind. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Dust in the wind. Everything is shark in the wind. Everything is shark in the Dust in the wind, everything is sharp.